Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shock Treatment. We're back in the workshop. Today we're looking at our very own bike. This is uh, the Shock Bike. We buy uh, a bike every year, although this one's uh, just over 12 months old now. It's a 2022 350 EXE, and at this point in time we've got the Explore Forks in, uh, sorry, we don't have the Explore Forks. We've got the Cone Valve Forks in here at the moment, and we have the upgraded Shock. Now, uh, we normally run the Explore Forks in these, uh, but we recently did a test between the cone valve forks, the Del Soggio forks, and the Olin's forks. But I, know, I really don't know of anyone that does more testing than us or more developing, and we're searching for the answers all the time. Now, this normally comes out with the Explore fork. The Explore fork's been around since 2017, and it's not without its problems. And this is part two of our video series in order to not only show you what's going on with the forks uh, that KDM have produced recently, or WP, but the most economical and, and even more elaborate solutions for them. So we'll uh, go and grab the original forks that uh, were off this, and we'll pull them down, we'll have a good look at it, and uh, see the, um, the pros and cons of this system. Okay, so here we are back at the bench. We've taken our Explore fork, we've taken the cartridges out of the, uh, the outer tubes, really don't need to see the outer tubes, they're very conventional. And with this leg, just... Okay, so here we are back at the bench. Uh, we've pulled our forks apart, we've taken the cartridges out of the outer tubes. We really don't need to see the outer tubes, they're very conventional. And uh, we're going to have a look at the intricacies of this Explore fork design. Now just like the 4CS fork, it's one leg rebound, one leg compression. As you can see, you uh, have your little adjusters on the top of these caps here. And uh, yes, these ones break as well. So this one's already fractured. We might see that in a close-up. Uh, but let's look at the cartridges. On the rebound side, very, very conventional cartridge. It's a good solid design. It's been around for many, many years and it works well. Okay, if we pop this out, here is our rebound valve. Now, because uh, we have one leg rebound, one leg compression, this is the only one that has any form of rebound damping in it. And so we see that they've, uh, they've really bolstered this rebound valving stack. I mean, it has to, has to do the work of both forks. So basically when it comes to rebound, we have what we'd call a, a separate function fork here. Now it has also a conventional mid valve on the bottom of this valve. And at the base, we have the compression base adjuster. As, oh, sorry, it's not an adjuster, this is solid. Okay, so basically you've got your compression valve on the bottom and it is doing an element of uh, compression damping also. Now it's when we move to the compression leg that things get a little weird. Uh, the first time I ever saw this, I thought, what the hell is going on here? Okay, and so uh, very similar cartridge in design, but it has uh, a couple of things that we'll discuss in a minute. Uh, now this valve assembly in here it has effectively what looks like a um, uh, an engine valve in here and so if you think of an engine valve uh, with your adjuster it basically allows that to remove uh, move further off the seat and if you uh, are winding it to uh, increase your compression damping it closes that valve seat down so very very simple setup uh, but it sort of has you scratching your head as to why they would come up with this it's certainly not conventional and it doesn't work all that well. So I don't know who's testing this stuff. One of the reasons it doesn't work that well is we've got a vented cartridge at the top and the way this pressurizes the fluid is distinctly different to a conventional fork. Now, we'll have a look at a drawing on this in a minute and we'll discuss exactly what's going on. But um, uh, basically this doesn't stabilize the fluid at all. In fact, it destabilizes the fluid when it comes to any form of suspension, whether it be a fork or a shock, we have to remember that it is the oil that is our damping medium. Okay, anything that we've got here, whether it be a fork or shock, whatever type of fork, whatever type of shock, that is simply a mechanism to influence the oil movement. Now, anything that we do to um, stabilize the oil is gonna give us stable or you know, correct damping performance. Anything that destabilizes the oil will really hamper with our damping performance. And so uh, let's get into this, let's pull it down and we'll have a look at what's happening with this. Okay, so I've pulled apart our compression assembly, not the one off this fork. We've got a number of these forks around the workshop at the moment. They're very, very popular for us to upgrade. 
And uh, what we'll see here, if we just pull the center out of this, we have a little valve seat. And as I said before, this seat, this valve is much like an engine valve. And basically, uh, that little spigot runs inside this column. And as you make your adjustment at the fork cap, if you want it to be softer, it'll unseat that valve and allow a lot more fluid to bypass. If you want it to be firmer, uh, you simply um, uh, allow that to reseat and it'll push a lot more fluid and so naturally gets harder. Very simple system and uh, mechanically it's very sound. I mean, it, it activates uh, exactly the way as the designer intended. What they probably didn't think about was how this would upset the fluid inside the fork. And like I said, oil is our damping medium. We really need to keep that as stable as possible. Unfortunately, this one doesn't. And so we'll have a look at a drawing now and um, uh, see exactly how this messes with us. Okay, I've quickly mocked up a drawing of our rebound leg. Now, in the rebound leg, it's very, very conventional. We still have our compression valve down the bottom and it's still doing a good deal of work even in the rebound leg. We have our rebound valve in the center. It has its rebound uh, uh, shimming on there. And we also have what we call a mid valve, which is compression damping that's on the back of the rebound piston. That really helps with uh, stroke control, height of the stroke, etc. But it's very, very important that this compression valve always offers greater resistance than the mid valve. And the reason for that is that as this fork compresses, basically the rebound valve is moving down, the damper rod is entering the system, and we want this fluid that's in between the two valves to develop enough pressure that it can lift this compression damping here and move a solid column of oil to the back of the piston. Very important that that fills up and it fills up um, effectively so that when we hit the rebound stroke, that valve is moving back through a solid column of oil and we've got correct damping and correct control from this, this fork movement. Ultimately, as the fork compresses, this damper rod entering the system in order for it to fit in, uh, now we know that oil won't compress, so basically as that column comes down and the damper rod is entering the system, it must displace an equivalent volume of oil. And it's that volume that gets pushed ultimately through the compression valve and it comes through the vent to the outside of the chamber. Now what will happen on the rebound stroke is that will all come back up and what we'll find is we need to replace that volume of oil and that volume of oil will get drawn in under vacuum and it's in this particular case that this fork has the opportunity to create a little bit of cavitation if you like but that that quickly compresses on the next stroke and um, and the uh, the bubbles uh, tend to settle very very quickly okay so here we have our compression leg and this is the design that's got every hydraulics engineer every uh, fluid dynamicist that's uh, involved in suspension just shaking their head Okay, this uh, is by no means going to add stability to our oil. It's going to destabilize the fluid volume. And that's why we find that, that this thing is okay when you're just ambling along first, second gear. But as soon as you pick the pace up, put any real demand on this fork, it's going to uh, uh, aerate that oil. We'll get a foamy mixture and our damping will go away on us. And typically riders are coming back saying, feels okay, but as the harder I push, the worse this fork gets. I get no control from it. And so the reason being that like our rebound leg, we still have our compression valve down the bottom and it's offering an element of resistance. But of course, we've got another compression valve on the end of this rod and it's offering resistance as well. So if this is the greatest source of resistance, the oil that's in between these two valves, it will move up through this assembly, past that uh, little compression valve, it'll move through that vent, it'll come out the top of the cartridge. And so the damper rod entering the cartridge now, because that top of that cartridge is vented, it can displace fluid straight out the cartridge and it's offering nothing to, uh, to the pressure build up within that fork. Now, if we were to shut that down, if we were to make that valve seat and shut those ports down, we will actually generate an enormous amount of pressure in between these two valves. The compression valve will open and that entire volume will get displaced. And so no matter whether it's going out this way or it's getting out that way, we will see that come all the way through. And where our rebound leak, all we were looking at was the displacement for that rod. And so the refill was simply that rod volume. Um, in this particular case, uh, we will have the entire cartridge volume have to be replaced under vacuum. And, uh, you know, we will see a little, if this valve is open, we'll see a little bit of oil come back under here. 
Um, but what we're finding is that by virtue of the fact that that valve itself is in oil, as it's returning, it's offering an element of resistance, and that resistance from the valve body is far greater than what we're going to find at those ports. So it'll tend to push oil out uh, rather than allow the oil to come back in. And so uh, you can see just by that, by, de by destabilizing the oil, uh, we're going to run into problems. The oil will aerate, we'll end up with a foamy mixture, and our damping will go south on us. So not good. Okay, so we've had this fork apart, we've seen how it works, how it doesn't work, and um, the differences between the rebound leg and the compression leg. Now the rebound leg is very, very sound design, as we know, a little funky in the uh, compression leg. But um, anyway, let's look at some solutions. And so if we're going to make modifications or upgrades, obviously we can do a little or we can do a lot based on um, what the customer's requirements are, what sort of budget they're working with and so on. But if we want to keep it cheap, if we want to look at um, uh, making a change and not spending too much money, what we can do is we can treat the rebound leg uh, as a separate function fork. And we can basically put all our valving into the rebound leg so that it does all the compression duties as well as the rebound. And, uh, and that will work quite well for us. Um, separate function forks have been around for many, many years now. All of the current KTM motocross bikes with their air forks have uh, a damping leg combined with the air spring leg. So, um, so any motocross bike in the KDM range at this point is uh, running a separate function fork, unless they've changed them. Now, the biggest difference with the compression leg is that it has this vented top, okay? And so we have a lot of stuff that's messing with us, that assembly that's on the end of the rod and, uh, and this top. And so uh, by just treating the rebound leg uh, as a separate function fork, we disregard the compression leg altogether and so the rebound leg gives us our solution and this if we want we can treat it as just a compression adjuster. So once we've made our mods to the rebound leg if we want to go a step further we can actually install a compression adjuster in the, uh, the bottom of the rebound leg itself and we can transfer all the hardware from the, the standard compression valving over onto this post and uh, that has a clicker adjustment in the bottom and so your rebound leg will then have adjustable rebound and adjustable compression. So this adds about $99 and uh, very uh, economical upgrade. And that fork will work well. Uh, now there are intermediary op upgrades offered by uh, Kreft from the US. Uh, there's a version of the Kreft system uh, made here in Australia by a company called Cruise Tune and Del Soggio out of Italy uh, have their XP1 kits. And these are intermediary kits. They work within the compression leg, make the compression leg more effective than what it currently is. And uh, that will be an upgrade on the, the standard design. We never install those kits. The reason that we don't install them is because it really doesn't cost that much more to get a complete solution. And so it becomes economically viable to explore the kit that was uh, brought out by Racetech once again, Racetech, a very, very innovative company in suspension and, um, you know, they're based in the US. And their kit offers a uh, complete upgrade for this fork. And what they've done is they've basically looked at this comp leg and go, you know what, this shit's not working. So let's get rid of it and let's make two open chamber cartridges and uh, we'll have each leg do compression and each leg do rebound. Now, there's a number of companies who have got the same kit, we have Schaefer, we have Racetech, we have Del Soggio, have that XP, XP1 Pro kit, and um, there's a, an English company called K-Tech. Now the Schaefer kit and the K-Tech are exactly the same, for some reason the K-Tech kit's nearly $300 dear, I don't get it. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll open this one up because it opens and closes the easiest, rather than pull the Racetech one apart. What you get with these kits is uh, complete compression assemblies, They'll have com adjustable compression. This one's got its clicker in the bottom as well. They come with the valves. They come with all the hardware. Uh, you get the rebound valves, which allow you to get rid of this piece on the top, and you put a com conventional rebound assembly in there, and they give you the rebound valves, all the adjustable mechanism, and so on. And most importantly, what they give you is a new cartridge top. That then allows you to get rid of this this vents itself and screw this one in its place 
And then we have two very reliable, very solid cartridges. We have all the hardware. And this is not just a, uh, uh, not just solving a problem, but these components an upgrade on the standard components as well. So we can achieve higher levels of damping performance. And uh, this will give you the fork you'd much rather ride on. So um, uh, whether you go Racetech, Del Soggio, Schaefer, K-Tech, um, these, this is the way I would go. You're generally going to be looking around the $700 mark for these kits, or just under, I should say, unless you get the K-Tech one and it's over $900. So um, that will give you the bike you'd rather ride on. So uh, uh, choose which way you want to go. That, uh, that's all we've got for um, the Explore Fork, and uh, hope this helps. Okay, stay tuned. Bye.